All right, let's talk about custom hooks. These are really cool and super useful in a lot of situations. All of the patterns that we've talked about have been about encapsulating state and managing behaviors in a way that is uh, easier to reason about. So what we want to create is an API, basically, where other developers can use these and kind of understand what's going on. So we're going to we're going to get into a little bit of like what makes a hook and how to create your own, but also some of the reasoning behind why this is easier than the other patterns. And hopefully after you've watched this, you see the evolution of uh, some of these patterns in React and, and why uh, they've led in the direction of hooks. Um, so what we see here is the use window hook. Uh, and this is being used in Tag V5. And there's a couple places where I just needed uh, the, the width of the viewport to basically, you know, make some sort of conditional change, right? What you'd normally do with the width of uh, your viewport or your window. So all this does is it has its own internal state where uh, we're looking at the, uh, the window inner height and width. And so when this first runs, our initial state uh, executes this function to get those values. So we have the value on window size, and that's what we return. And since window size is this object, I can use it like this, where I can destructure de from that object the height or the width from use window. So it doesn't give me an updater function. There's no reason for me to do that. All of that's handled internally. So that's how you would use a hook like that. Um, what's happening inside is it also has this use effect hook, which is very important. So we have this on resize function, which takes the window height and width and basically sets the window size in use state. So we're updating the state with these values. Now you see this line 13 and you're like, why are we checking the window? This, I mean, realistically we can ignore this. Um, that's specific to Gatsby and it's because it's being run uh, in a node environment where the window doesn't exist. So uh, as long as the window isn't undefined, we can go ahead and run this. So this only runs in the browser, which is important, um, but it's just like some some safety in a server-side rendered environment. So uh, excuse me on that. Uh, but we're just registering an event listener. And uh, when we get a, a resize event, we run on resize so that we always have fresh uh, width and height, right? This all makes sense. Uh, something that use effect handles for us, uh, if you return a function, you can clean up your events. So. In React, if you register an event listener, it's very important that you clean that up because React is mounting and unmounting components. Uh, you have the potential to remount and re-register event listeners and have duplicates or create memory leaks. You can cause some problems and strange behaviors if you don't clean these up. Uh, with class components, you would traditionally clean these up in the component will unmount lifecycle hook. But now that we're using hooks and not lifecycle hooks, please don't conflate those two, um, we have to handle it a different way. And when you are doing asynchronous work, you need to use effect. And this is the proper way to clean up that event. So if you're confused by this at all, please refer to the documentation. Uh, React has created some really good, really straightforward documentation on this. Um, so sorry if that's a little bit confusing, um, but that is the use window hook. Um, now, that has nothing to do with our to-do app, which I've adapted our other hook. So just like uh, with a higher order component or with render props, this is a way to abstract logic and state uh, to a different place so that you don't see it all in one spot. 
it's all here, but it's also, you know, this is just returning markup. We're not dealing with business logic here. It all lives here in our hook. Now, if you're looking at this and thinking this is all familiar, it's because it is. It's exactly the same thing, copied and pasted from here into there. And what I'm doing is I'm just returning an array with all of the items that I need. So our items array, our loading Boolean, and the updater methods uh, just right here. So it's a little bit, I mean, comparing these two, it's a little bit cleaner to look at that and think, okay, I don't need to know what uh, items are. I mean, I can kind of infer that it's maybe an array because we're using length and we're iterating through them uh, over here and like our items list. So, you know, there's, there's some inferences you can make, but that doesn't matter as much as, okay, I'm rendering out this, these DOM elements and all of the logic is encapsulated somewhere else. So if that's kind of what you prefer to look at, um, this is a good way to separate those concerns. Um, so if, if this makes sense to you, great. Um, I'm glad it was helpful. If not, again, refer to the documentation. Um, there's lots of documentation on creating custom hooks on creating, um, uh, on, on essentially, uh, trying to create good APIs for, for other developers to use. Um, that's more or less it. I, I do want to go over, we'll call it a bonus. Um, so essentially this works just in its current implementation. That's great. Um, but if you wanted to make it a little bit more useful and give your user something, uh, that maybe they need a little bit more control, um, we can allow them to pass in uh, your initial state or your initial loading. Uh, but what you do when you kind of open that can of worms, and I'll show you uh, this, this error here in a second. So uh, let's pass in worms and false. So I'm going to give this a save. Works. Okay. So when you start giving uh, a user some control, uh, there are some courtesies you may want to afford them. Uh, so I've, I've done a little bit of safety checking here. So let's look at the difference between these two errors. So in this error, uh, we know that, okay, the problem that I've created comes down to the default state needs to be an array. Great. Okay. Uh, so, hmm, this needs to be an array. Cool. Oh, well, not just an array. Oh, it's expecting the data to be in like a specific shape. Cool. Uh, we can definitely make that happen, right? Now, if those concerns weren't in the way. Uh, it still works, but there's probably some subtle bugs in here. Uh, and you, you want to kind of corral your users into using your hook the way that it's meant to be used um, and, and try and keep them from creating bugs for themselves. So a little bit of bonus um, in here just on kind of error checking now. Uh, if we were writing this with TypeScript, uh, we would be able to do much more, but that's like a totally different animal. Uh, hopefully this was helpful and I'm done.